Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a holiday makeup products. 2020, where are they now? I am going over the majority of the products that I bought during the holiday season last year and telling you one year later my thoughts of them, if they've changed, if I've even used them, all of that good stuff. So if you want to hear all that, then just keep watching. So I actually filmed this video last year. I did a Where Are They Now 2019 holiday makeup and I had so much fun with it. So I wanted to do it again this year. I've said this many a times before, but holiday makeup season is my absolute favorite. I think they come out with some of the best products during this time, particularly when it comes to palettes. Last year, I bought a lot of palettes. I didn't buy too many sets of small things like I did in 2019. I think I realized I had so much makeup I didn't need to buy those little sets anymore but I bought a lot of the big stuff and I realize I'm probably missing some stuff in this video but I really just wanted to pick out the main products from my favorite brands that were very clearly holiday launches and products that I felt excited to talk about so if I'm missing any that's why. <laughs> Let's get into it. Organize this in alphabetical order by brand. First brand that we have that I purchased from for the holiday season is BH Cosmetics. Now I actually bought this pretty late in the season. I was going to pass on it but ultimately I decided I wanted it. Particularly last year I was hot and heavy for BH Cosmetics eyeshadow formula. I just couldn't believe the prices and the quality that you would get. I picked up this Naughty eyeshadow palette. They came out with two. I didn't pick up a BH BH Holiday Eyeshadow Palette this year just because I feel like I've done my fair share in the BH line. But how beautiful is this palette? I couldn't not get it. And the thing that really excites me about this palette is that it is the same good formula that I love from BH. This was top notch quality. I believe it actually went on sale for like 50% off so you could get it for such a good deal. It had some very trendy shades in here like greens and purples. I had a lot of fun with this. Because my channel is so eyeshadow based, this is not one that I reach for a ton anymore. I want to say I've probably created about five looks with this, but I've reached into this palette multiple times just to get specific colors that I was looking for because this has great transition colors, great highlight colors. It really is a useful palette and was definitely one of my favorites for the holiday season last year and is probably one of the best values as well given the price of BH Cosmetics and the quality. I heard I believe not so great things about their holiday palette this year correct me if I'm wrong if you picked it up but the one from last year was bomb the next brand that we have is Charlotte Tilbury I picked up a lot from Charlotte Tilbury there's multiple things so the first one that we're gonna talk about is the dazzling diamonds luxury palette of pops now she came out with multiple little mini releases at different times so I'm not a palette of Pops fan. I ended up eventually ordering this because I saw it in Nordstrom with all of the pretty lights on it, making it look super sparkly. And I was like, you know what? I need that. And I feel like they did improve the pop formula with this one. I don't reach for it entirely too much just because I tend to steer clear of the palettes of Pops. I find that there's a lot of glitter fallout. But with this formula, this is definitely a good formula in terms of the pop formula. These have more base to them, they're really pretty, and they do add a little extra oomph to my eyes. But just generally speaking, I'm not one to grab for lid toppers, so this isn't my most used palette from the Charlotte Tilbury collection, but it definitely was a good one. We also have the infamous Fire Rose. Everybody was hot and heavy for this little quad because it is probably one of the best Charlotte at Tilbury quads to come out. I love this one. It's nearly impossible to get a hold of in the US. I know to you European folks it was available to you, but if you were in the US, it's really hard to get a hold of this. But this really is one of her best quads ever. The formulas in here are so buttery, so creamy, so metallic and unique. You just can't get better than this. I almost don't want to use this, 
because it's so good. I don't ever want to be without this. So yeah, this is one of the best, if not the best Charlotte Tilbury quads. And I just don't know why she hasn't re-released it in the US or come out with something that is the same formulas as these four, like do it again, Charlotte. Along with that launch, she also came out with two new eyes to mesmerize. And to be quite honest, I feel like I have these shades in her eyes to mesmerize as well, <laughs> like before I got these, because we have the ever so classic kind of rose gold shade that Charlotte Tilbury is so known for. And then we also have Copper Sunrise, which is more of a, I mean, a copper color. I noticed that these two aren't as metallic as her other ones, so I'm less inclined to reach for these. I like a really metallic cream base, and the other shades I have from Charlotte Tilbury are more glimmery. These I find to be a little bit dull. I feel like I can get more glimmer from her powder shadows as opposed to these. So these haven't been ones that I've been inclined to reach for. When I reach for my eyes to mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury, it's not most likely going to be those two. They're fine. I do find eyes to mesmerize cream shadows to crease on me, which is why I typically prefer to use these more so as bases in terms of longevity. These just weren't my favorite colors that she launched, so I'm not I'm not reaching for them a lot. And then kind of the main core holiday drop was first this Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlight. If you've been following my videos in the past year, this was one of my all-time favorite holiday releases. I cannot put this down. This is one of the most beautiful highlights ever. I believe you can still get your hands on it, but this just blends into one with your skin and creates the most beautiful, seamless glow. I cannot recommend this highlight enough. It is an astronomical price, but to me, it's worth every penny. This is what I want a highlight to embody. It's just, it is perfection. It is the perfect glow. One of the best that came out during the holiday season. Finally, we have the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. So this is her annual big 12 pan palette that she comes out with every year. I much prefer the packaging of this year compared to the one that came out for 2021. This one is so much prettier. The one that came out for 2021 was black. And honestly, Honestly, this is a little bit more up my alley for color story as well so I still prefer this over the one that came out in this year in 2021 because you have a neutral brown section, you have a purpley section, you have kind of this typical Charlotte Tilbury pink section, and then you have this kind of yellowy tan section. And this is just more up my alley for colors that I would personally wear. I'm not saying the quality is better compared to this year's. They're both kind of the same quality, but this color story is more up my alley, but you might prefer the one that came out this year's color story more because that one has a green and that one's really pretty but I think in terms of every day I'm more inclined to grab for this one so I love this guy I think it's awesome and if you are looking to get into Charlotte Tilbury these 12 pans are the way to go I truly find them to be the best value the best way to experiment with new colors and sometimes Charlotte Tilbury's quads can be inconsistent and I find that with these 12 pans they're more consistent and sometimes better quality than some of the quads so that's all that launched for Charlotte Tilbury during the holiday Days last year. Let's move on to Dior. Now this was a very early release in the holiday season, but these were awesome. I have to talk about them. The Dior Backstage Glow Face Palettes. These were limited edition colors, so I don't believe you can get your hands on them anymore, which is very unfortunate <laughs> because they are so good. So Dior has one of my all-time favorite highlight formulas on the market and these do not fall short. They have a couple other quads that are in their permanent range, but these two particular color stories you can no, no longer get a hold of. So the first one that we have is Rose Gold and I live, die, breathe for a pink highlight. I am huge into pink blushes and I love when a pink blush kind of blends out into a pinky highlight. So this has gotten a ton of use for me. I mixed these two shades on my cheek today. I put a more pinky mauvey blush and then and the pinky highlight on top. Just stunning. Dior has a superb formula. And then of course we also have the pure gold one. I love a gold highlight as well. I would say this is one that I reach for less than the pinky one, but you cannot go wrong with the champagne colors that are in here and just a gold highlight in general is always very flattering. 2020 holiday season was the year for highlights. They came out with so many beautiful luxury highlights during the holiday season and these two did not fall 
sure. I'm telling you, last year's holiday collections, top of the line. I mean, a lot of these products I'm still using regularly, and I couldn't say the same last year when I was talking about 2019's products. Okay, let's move on to Fenty. So for some reason, I only have lip products from Fenty. So later on in the holiday season, I don't know that this was a holiday launch, but it came out during the holiday season. Fenty launched a new lip gloss formula, and it is their cream version. And honestly, I prefer the cream version over their original formulation. So in the last year, I've been grabbing for these more than the OGs, just because these have more pigment to them. And I've been very much into just a lip liner and a lip gloss over top. So these have a little bit more pigmentation to them. I am currently wearing Fenty Glow over just like a neutral lip liner. And do you see how pretty and natural, not sticky it is? It's still the great classic Fenty formula. I just prefer the finish. I also really love Candy Milk. I have a couple other shades in my collection in this formula that I'm staring at right now. It's phenomenal. My favorite lip formula from Fenty. But in terms of their holiday collections, they came out with their holidays lip gloss set. I buy them every year. Those had more of the traditional, original Fenty lip gloss formulations. I don't even have them now because I use these so much. They are scattered in my purses. I buy these sets every year to put these lip glosses in my purses, have them ready to go because I do love the formulation. So again, another item where I can say to this day, I am still using these. I even bought the version that they came out with this year of those lip glosses because I can't be tamed. I love these sets and I do think I prefer the holiday set that came out in 2020 over the 2021 set. So that one was my favorite. Next up, let's talk Hourglass. So as you know, every year Hourglass comes out with the Ambient Lighting Edit Palette. It is a mixture of new and classic formulations that already exist in their line. And the reason why it normally is such a big deal is because one, Hourglass has superb quality, but two, because they're so expensive so it's nice to get it all in one compact palette. And I have to say of every face palette that comes out every year, the Hourglass ones I use regularly in my routine for every single one of the years. They're really that great. So this is the Lighting Edit Sculpture and I actually used this all last week when Jose's parents were visiting so it did not go unused but there's something about this color curation that is not my favorite. The Holiday Palette that came out the year prior to this was my all-time favorite best array of colors. I still very very much love this one but it, it's not as good as the year before. Now thinking in terms of the year of this year's palettes that came out, I prefer this layout because there's six shades as opposed to five shades in this year so I do prefer the 2020 palette over 2021 but I do think I prefer some of the colors in the 2021 over this 2020 palette. So this one kind of falls in the middle to me in terms of all of the hourglass palettes but she is still being used regularly by me. Next up let's move on to Huda Beauty. Every year Huda's holiday launch is one of her big $65 palettes and last year it was the Naughty Nude palette and this I did not expect to love as much as I did. It is a bit of a deeper palette and we know that Huda Beauty tends to stick in the same color family when it comes to these palettes but there was something about about this one that was extra rich and extra beautiful. There's some really beautiful shiny glimmers that Huda does so well and I found the mattes to be extremely pigmented and very very blendable. I've been into kind of lighter more simple eye makeup this year so this hasn't been the one that I've been reaching for a lot. The Rose Quartz that came out this year I prefer that one over this one. This one is the evening <laughs> version for me and I don't have very much late nights but I love this one and I I feel like those of you who have medium and deeper skin tones, I would definitely recommend this one over the new Rose Quartz. This one is a little bit more berry based though, so it depends on your color preferences. But no, I did really, really enjoy this palette. It got a lot of buzz for good reason. I'm not using this every day. I have a lot of palettes in my collection. I'm not constantly reaching for this one, but it still was one of the better launches of 2020. The next palette that I have is from Juvia's Places launch. Now Juvia's Place is not one of the main brands that I cover on my channel and I quite irregularly buy 
some things from them, but far and few between. I couldn't resist though the Wahala 2 palette that came out last year because it does have some multi-chromes. I'm comparing this launch right here to the launch that came out in 2021 for this holiday season, and they were all small six panners, so they didn't do it for me. I kind of like the bigger palette here that launched last year with the multi-chromes, and anyways, I don't use this that frequently because quite honestly, this turned out to be more colorful than I even thought. It's definitely something that is out of my comfort zone. I've only used it a handful of times. I do believe I have a TikTok where I was playing with this and I just was in love with the quality, but she's a lot, so she doesn't get reached for a lot. But I do think this is a nice representation of Juvia's place in my collection since I have so few palettes. And I really like this. It causes me to get out of my comfort zone. There are some shades that I find to be difficult to work with. For some reason, I'm not in love with Juvia's formula. I don't get it. I mean, I think the formula is great for the price, but I would choose BH over Juvia's any day, but I do love the color story of this. Let's go on to NARS. They came out with the Extreme Effects eyeshadow palette last year, and um, I much prefer the palette that came out this year in 2021. Now taking a look at this, I definitely didn't need it, and the quality on this one didn't wow me either. It is fine and it has some great wearable colors and I've enjoyed the looks that I've done with this but they were just boring everyday looks. Uh, yeah this isn't a wow for me so I kind of forgot about it honestly. <laughs> Natasha Denona she had quite a lot of end of year launches last year so it was hard for me to decipher what was really part of the holiday collection so I kind of picked the three items that stood out to me most one of which was the glam palette and and um, you know how I went with this one. I am still using this one regularly in my everyday routine. It is probably my favorite, most used Natasha Denona palette. It's my color story. I love these types of colors for every day. I've talked about this plenty of times on my channel. I've done so many looks using this. One of my most used palettes of 2021, I would say. It is that good. Trio Chrome also came out. And unfortunately, I don't use this one as much as the Glam. But I will say I do think it is an under palette. The multi-chromes in here that are the center row are disappointing compared to indie shadows, but if you want to taste a multi-chrome, but maybe it want it toned down, these would be good for you, but not for me. What stands out to me about this palette are the mattes in here more than anything. I just find the tones to be really unique. I do not have another palette that looks like this, and I'm not even talking about the, the multi-chromes. The mattes alone made this palette worth it for me. I don't reach for it too often though because it just really is outside of my comfort zone zone. I have dug for this recently to use it with the Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 3 palette which has a lot of multi-chromes that are way better than the ones in the Natasha Denona because the mattes are so complementary to those types of shadows. I don't use this as often as I should. I've only used it probably a handful of times. It was a good one but Glam was way better in my opinion. Also the I Need a Nude Glow Highlight. Now I know this came out with other items but this really stood out to me as a holiday item. It was bunched up in that group of really great luxury highlighters. This is bomb.com. I'm about to put some on. I did a video on all the luxury highlighters that came out during this season of luxury highlighters because just which direction did you go? This was one of the better ones for sure. I don't think it beats the Dior or the Charlotte Tilbury, but it's a solid third place for the luxury highlights that came out. It looks really smooth on the skin. It is quite blinding. It's a very versatile color. It's going to go with a lot of different looks and I think it's become a staple in a lot of our daily routines because it is just that good. All right let's talk Pat McGrath. You guys know I order everything that Pat McGrath <laughs> comes out with so we're going to start off with the quads that she came out with. There were three. I am wearing two of the quads on my eyes today so I am wearing Risqué Rose which I'm wearing this hot pink kind of to blend out. It's quite soft and this is the color that is all over my lid. Isn't it stunning? I love that there's a blitz shade in there. And then I also mixed in some of Fleur Fantasia. So I used this in the crease, this in the lower lash line, and this as the highlights. I'm going to play the tutorial now if you want to see how I did this look.
So unfortunately, Fleur Fantasia was not my favorite quad to come out. I found the shades to be kind of bland, honestly. It's a soft, pretty palette. It speaks very springtime to me, but I haven't been so inclined to reach for it. This is the first time that I reached for it in a while, and it is very pretty, but I just wanted a little bit more from Pat. You know, I don't go to Pat for soft eyeshadow looks. The saving grace for Risqué Rose is the Blitz Astral shade that makes this quad worth it, as well as this pink is really beautiful, but again, I'm not in love with this quad. It feels very safe to me. It's fine. I mean, look at my look right now. It is gorgeous. I believe these two palettes really are a match made in heaven. They should be made into an eight pan because they worked so well together for this look, but again, very pretty softer looks. The other quad that came out is Interstellar Icon. I like this one, but I'm just not in love with it. Pat McGrath has so many other better palettes in my opinion opinion than these three, but this one is really beautiful. I did do a look with this one kind of recently when the new holiday palettes came out. I wanted to pull this one out because it looked similar. This is different than the one that came out for 2021 and it's really beautiful and glimmery. I don't quite love this shade, but I haven't honestly reached for these quads very much. I'm more inclined to reach for her mothership palettes because I just find them to be better. Is that going to stop me from buying her quads in the future? No. <laughs> And then, of course, we have this Celestial Divinity eyeshadow palette. I've said this multiple times. I prefer the OG palette right here compared to the new palette that came out this year for 2021. But the 2020 palette right here is more up my alley, mostly because, as you can see, there's a lot of purpley colors. So this is more my color story. I found the one that came out in 2021 this year a little bit harder for me to maneuver. It is more wearable in ways, but I've just had a lot more fun with this palette. I prefer it. I love the quality in this one. It's one of my favorites. I would recommend this one over the one that came out for the holidays this year, but it depends on the type of colors that you're going to wear. I love it. I don't reach for it a ton, I'm going to be honest. I've been really into the Divine Rose 1 and 2 this year, so this has fallen to the back burner, but it still is a great one. And then lastly, from that collection, I got the Sublime Skin Highlighter. I hate this highlight. I think it is not worth the money at all. It's as heavy as a brick though. I will say that, but the quality is weird on this to me. It's like a putty formula. It doesn't look very smooth on my skin. It's a little bit harder to work out. It's just not a highlight formula that I enjoyed. And especially with all the other great highlights that came out in 2020, I was not inclined to reach for this. It was a bit deep for me as well. Just didn't really care about this highlight. Pat luckily has redeemed herself and has come out with much better highlights in the most recent year, but yeah, that that was an off one for Pat. The next brand that I have is Rare Beauty. I remember struggling on whether or not I wanted to pick these up, but oh boy, am I glad that I did. Now, I haven't used these in the most recent months, but in the first, I want to say six months of owning these, I talked about these a lot on my channel because I was so pleasantly surprised. So this first palette that we have is Magnetic Spirit, and then the other one that we have is Comp confident energy. The quality on these are surprisingly good. They were a very good price, so I wasn't sure what to expect. They're all shimmer palettes as well, which I thought almost kind of cheapened them, but in all reality, the formula on these were stunning. You didn't even need a matte with these shades, and I found the color stories to be really versatile and fun to play with. Pleasantly surprised by these. I was shocked at how much I liked them, that I kept mentioning them in videos. I loved the looks that I was creating. This one right here reminds me a lot of of one of the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes and the quality on these was spectacular for the price. Rare hasn't come out with eyeshadow palettes like these since and that's disappointing because I thought these were so so good. Okay so the next one that we have is from Tarte. I actually didn't buy any Tarte holiday sets in 2021. 2019 and 2020 I did get um 2019 more so but 2020 I did pick up one of their cheek trios so they they were like this. They come in a little compact and you get three different shades and it came in a set of three. So this is the first one that we have. I actually am wearing this one today. I've used the bronzer, which is good. I used the blush, which is nice and pretty. Um, and then there also was this blush set, which you can see is a little bit more peachy. And then the last one, honestly, I recently decluttered it just because I wasn't interested in it and wasn't ever going to use it. You know, I am happy that I purchased this set 
I've liked all of their cheek stuff in the past and I feel like Tarte has very good cheek products but this year 2021 was the year that I stopped because I just don't need the Tarte stuff anymore it seems not as good quality to me so 2020 was the last year I think that I'm going to purchase these unless they really shock me next year and I don't think these are bad quality but even quite honestly today when I was using this I wasn't wowed anymore I wish I had used my hourglass instead they're fine they're solid. I bought these more so because of tradition because in the previous years I bought them every year and I wasn't disappointed with these. I think they're pretty but I just they don't excite me anymore and Tarte as a brand just doesn't excite me anymore. Their stuff seems not as good quality, not as special anymore so don't use those too often but I did use them today. Oh I'm about to get mad talking about this one so this is from tom ford's holiday collection last year this is the soleil neige quad in first frost when i tell you this quad is amazing it is one of my favorite tom ford quads i have to embarrassingly admit didn't use this one too often this year and i don't know why because it really is a great representation of what i want all tom ford quads to be when i love a tom ford quad I love it. And when I hate a Tom Ford quad, I hate it. Tom Ford is inconsistent across the board, which I believe is unacceptable for a brand at this price point. But dang, I keep coming back because when it's good, it's good, you guys. And this is good. Guess what happened? I came back this year in 2021 for the new Soleil Nage quad and it was C-R-A-P. Okay? So 2020's Soleil Nage, gorgeous, stunning, perfect, beautiful, wearable, subtle, still pigmented, still blended, sophisticated, elegant, loved it. Worth every penny, it was worth full price to me, but I'm only mad because 2021's was so bad. How can a brand come out with something that is so good and then something that is so bad the next year? If you can get your hands on First Frost, one of my favorites, highly recommend it. Then we have good old Too Faced. You guys know I buy their annual tin holiday themed palette every year. It's kind of a fun little tradition for me at this point. This one is Pumpkin Spice. I think this one is probably my favorite in the most recent years that they've come out with. 2021's was nice. I actually just recently posted an Instagram reel creating a look with it. I pulled it out again because it was one of the first palettes that launched for the 2021 holiday season. They always launch these early and I recently used it. I like it every year. They're good quality, but they're not great quality, but they're good enough to keep me coming back every year. I love the scents. I love the themes. And since it's one of the first holiday palettes to come out, I'm super excited. So I always pick it up. But color story wise, this one was the best year in my opinion. You know, these shades down here are a little bit harder to work with, a little bit harder to blend, but we're not paying luxury prices here. They're fine enough to keep me coming back. But yeah, this one, my favorite. I used it a ton, like a lot. Definitely more than the 2021 palette. This one is the best in my opinion. I love that there's purples, that there's greens. There's still warm tones for the holiday season. If you can still get your hands on Pumpkin Spice, I do recommend this one over the Cinnamon Swirl. Though the Cinnamon Swirl is very pretty, but there's more variety in this one. I think Pumpkin Spice is more unique to the whole Too Faced holiday palette compared to this year's Cinnamon Swirl, which I feel like they took a step back because it is a little bit closer to like the gingerbread palettes. Next up, I think this was a holiday launch from Urban, Urban Decay. This is the Stone Vibes palette. Oh, uh, to me, I don't know why this got so much attention because I, I do not like this palette. I have not grabbed for it. And the only reason it is still in my collection is just to have the formula for reference, just to bag on it when I want to do a video about formulas I don't like. I don't get a whole lot from these. The shimmers are kind of chunky. There's not much variation between the shades because they're chunky without too pigmented of a base. They all kind of look like chunky glitter on the eyes. The mattes I don't find to blend well. I don't know. I don't know because so many people love this, but I just, I some shades are fine, but then some shades you're like, wait, where, what? I, 
it had potential to be so good. If the quality of this was good, I would love it because truly I think the colors that they have in here look stunning and in the pans they look beautiful. But performance wise, I could not get on board. Urban Decay came out with a palette this year, the Cyber Naked palette, which kind of has similar vibes to this. I prefer the Cyber Naked palette, but they're both not very good. So Urban Decay, get it together, please. I used to be the biggest fan of Urban Decay. I used to have all their super cool palettes like 10 years ago. I don't know what happened, man. They need to work on their quality. All right, Busy Art, as you know, 2021, this holiday season, Busy Art has absolutely killed it. So the 2021 palettes, I recommend over the 2020 palettes. I think this New Year's holiday palettes, Busy Art has stepped up their games. But let me show you, let's take a walk back into memory lane of what they launched last year. So they did launch their first round of the Petty Fours. There's some that I really like in here and there's some that I do find to be boring, but I did like these all around. The ones that came out in 2021 are better. I like the color stories more and they have cuter designs, but I really enjoy Praline because it's a little bit more subtle, great wearable colors. I think it's really beautiful for the everyday working person. And then Lila's because they really stuck to a true gray color story. Not too much depth on this, but I just liked that you could get a really simple, easy look in these little quads. I do recommend looking more into the New Year's, the 2021 Petty Force because I think a little bit more depth and variety in them. These are definitely more safe color stories, but you might like that about these. But yeah, I've had a lot of fun with these. I haven't used them a ton, but I, I reached for these more so than a lot of other items. And then they also launched the Violette Etendu. I was very excited about this because it was kind of a, a redo, a step up from their first purple palette that I loved. I don't think this is as good as that first purple palette, but nonetheless, I think it is a great purple palette. I actually have reached for this quite a lot because it is really great curation of colors. I think the transitions just make a lot of sense for the type of purples that we're working with here. They did a great job. Busy Art really has an eye for color and what is going to go with each other. They have the cute print on here. So this was my favorite holiday launch from Busy Art. I don't use it a ton because I have a vast collection, but this is one of my favorite palettes from Busy Art, so I like it a lot. Oh my gosh, this is the last one that I have to talk about. Okay, so we have this eyeshadow palette from Wayne Goss. I believe this was a holiday launch. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems pretty holiday-y for me. So this is the Pearl Moonstone palette, and as much as I want to love this, I don't. I love the color story on here and I love this shade. This shade, incredible. I kinda wanna put it all over my eyes right now. The black is also really nice, but these grays I find to be quite patchy. Um, and this is quite an expensive palette. The pans are really large, so you don't get a lot of variety. So you pay a lot for very few shades. So if you're getting few shades, that means they better work. You know, if you get a big palette and maybe one or two shades aren't that good, you can look past it. It's hard when two of the six shades, which happen to be the transition shades, are patchy because then you don't have a good base to work with. So there's been an internal battle within me because <laughs> I love the color story of this. I think Wayne did a great job with that, but performance wise, it wasn't my favorite. These are harder colors to create. I think Wayne has other palettes that I prefer over this one. This one was just average for me. I haven't been inclined to really reach for it because I didn't feel like fighting with those grays. Those are the major holiday launches that I covered last year. <laughs> I think definitely the holiday products that came out in 2020 were much better than the holiday products that came out in 2019. Either that or I became a little bit more sensible and bought more products that I knew I would really like, but it was a really successful year. There's so many products on my table right now that I see that I am still constantly using or constantly talking about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Be sure to stay tuned until next year because I will do a 2021 holiday roundup. I'll be honest. I think 2020 might be a little better than 21. <laughs> I'll let you know next year. But anyways, think, make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel because I am currently doing Vlogmas, meaning I am uploading a new video every single day. So you want to get notified to see what I'm going to talk about next if you love good makeup talk. And yeah, I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Have a good one.